If you pilot or fly in a small plane, you've probably experienced something just like Come this. On, Look Come at some birds. of these near misses. Whoa. Holy oh, close. Yep. Five hundred feet, stable approach. Go away, bird. Oh, birds. More birds. Uh, hang on a second. Whoa, 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 whoa. Look how devastating it could be if a bird strikes your airplane. Runway 25 in use, bird activity vicinity of the airport. Taking off or coming into land, there's a bird and there's you. And that's a conflict. It's a real problem in the general aviation world and the transport world. Wildlife strikes, and we're going to focus on bird strikes here, they're a really big deal. Every day, we see and hear reports on YouTube and in the news of another airplane hitting a bird. Bird strike, they believe, just after takeoff. Bird strike after takeoff here, we're assessing uh, if we had any damage, we'll be back to you. Yeah, we took that bird strike right in the nose, and we're getting uh, some strange noises. I think we might uh, puncture the ray dome. Kansas City American 1855, uh, we need to declare an emergency. Just uh, sounds like we had a bird strike. Before Echo Echo, uh, we think we just had a bird strike. We're going to go straight to the field. Uh, we're thinking on the nose. Looks like uh, we've still got engine power okay. The Southwest Air 54, we had a bird strike. We lost the number one engine. Uh, we do need emergency equipment. We had a bird strike. Declare an emergency, Delta 838. ATC, we've had a bird strike in the right engine. Come to a stop on the runway. Spirit 3044, there appears to be fire uh, under your red engine. Hey, matey, 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 career track 319, bird strike. I'm going to put it down on the golf course. Career track 319, Roger, we're rolling the gear. These days, those events are usually not events. The crew gets the plane back to safety, the plane lands, everybody's fine, rather than an event that causes injury or death. But it always wasn't like that. In October of 1960, an Eastern Airlines Lockheed Electric Jet took off from Boston. The plane ran into a flock of starlings, lost three out of four of its engines, and was not able to maintain altitude, and 60 people perished on that day. In 1958, a C-123 Bravo Fairchild, carrying a support team for the U.S. Thunderbirds, also had a bird strike. This time, it was a flock of geese that caused the airplane to crash, and we lost 19 people on that day. Bird strike strategies have been around for a long time, but it wasn't until the most well-known bird strike in U.S. history that things really got serious. The turning point was in 2009. We've all heard the amazing story, the miracle on the Hudson. Captain Sully, Jeff Skiles, and the crew safely landed in the Hudson River with 155 people on board, safe and sound. There have been so many advances in bird strike detection since 2009. Migratory model updates, feather collection and identification, white paper, studies, data, lots of data. As GA pods, we have access to all that information as well to help reduce our risk of a bird strike. A little later in this video, I'm going to show you a really cool tool that can really help you reduce your chance of a bird strike. If you like this kind of content, I'd really appreciate it if you give a like and subscribe. Thanks a lot. So you may ask yourself, why do I care about bird strikes? Well, there's two really good reasons for it. First, bird and wildlife strikes cause a lot of damage. Since 1990, there have been upwards of 275,000 bird strikes in just in the U.S. alone. That's just what has been reported. And because all strikes aren't reported, losses could be around $500 million per year. The real reason you should be concerned about bird strikes is it's a safety of flight issue. The data shows that 81 aircraft have been destroyed or damaged beyond repair. The same data shows that there's been 44 fatalities from those wildlife strikes. And you may be thinking, like, it is just pure dumb luck that if I go flying in my 172 that I'm going to hit a bird. How is there any possible way I can know what my risk is when I take off? Well, there's really good data from the FAA, the Bird Strike Committee, U.S. Department of Agriculture, the Smithsonian, Bird Strike Canada, our U.S. military, and many others. So what does that data tell us? The first thing it tells us is when do these strikes usually happen? It is region and climate dependent, but well over half of the bird strikes occur between July and October. That really means springtime when the birds are leaving the nest and then in fall, when they are migrating south for the winter. What time of day should we be alert as pilots? According to the FAA data, about 63% of bird strikes happen during the day. We have some at dawn and dusk, 
and another 30% or so at night. At what altitudes do these strikes usually happen? Zero AGL, up to 1,500 AGL, and then the next tier is 3,500 AGL. So really, anything close to the ground, that's where the birds are going to be. There's a myth that birds don't fly at high altitude. While the risk is very low, there have been reports of bird strikes well above 30,000 feet. At those low altitudes, it's pretty easy to figure out what phases of flight these strikes happen. Takeoff roll, it's climb out, it's approach to landing, and it's landing. All the times when you're low and possibly slow, close to the ground, that's when your chances are greatest for a bird strike. The other thing that's predictable is where do the birds like to hang out? Birds love dams, landfills, golf courses, water treatment areas, livestock or agricultural areas. Anywhere that there's access to food and water, the things that they need, that's where they're going to be. And since every ATIS in America basically says the same thing. Bird activity vicinity of airports. Yes, birds love airports too. What type of birds are we talking about? We're talking about small birds and larger birds. The small birds are morning doves, killdeer, and swallows that are generally pretty small, but there's a lot of them. While the risk of significant damage from these types of birds is lower, it's still there. The far greater risk for aviation is the larger birds. We're talking about the Canada goose, turkey vultures, hawks, ducks, osprey, among others. 12-pound Canada goose that hits a airplane at 150 knots can produce the same force as a thousand pound weight drop from a 10 foot height. That can cause a lot of damage. And our smaller GA airplanes aren't that fast, but even at 100 knots, the impact and damage to a small GA airplane can be very troubling. Luckily, we have amazing folks on the ground that are doing a lot to help prevent bird strikes. Airports, airport authorities, and government agencies lower the risk of these bird strikes with proven wildlife management techniques. That means anything from altering the habitat of the birds around the airport, making the airports ugly, using techniques to dismiss or, or remove the birds. It can be as old school as a decoy predator or even a scarecrow. And even height of grass matters on how many birds are going to hang out at your airport. Other ways to get birds away from the airport? By using technology and sound to make the airport environment as unpleasant as possible for the birds. And there's also some creative ways as well. Dogs are really useful for wildlife control because uh, specifically border collies, it's in their blood. Eventually the goal is to train the birds and other animals that they don't want to be here because there's a predator in town, something that's going to keep harassing them all the time. All right, so we have people on the ground helping us. Now what can we do as pilots to reduce that risk? General aviation, the airlines, we all despise risk. But who despises risk the most? Our U.S. military. And that's where we get the coolest tool that I didn't know about until recently, and you're going to love it. There's a system accessible to you that can determine the risk of a bird strike on every flight that you take. Avian Hazard Advisory System, AHAS. AHAS provides real-time information about where birds might be a threat. And how they do it is something that was a mystery to me until recently, and it's pretty cool. AHAS uses several sources of information to predict where birds are going to be. Some of them real-time, and some of them forecast. It uses NEXRAD, a SOAR model, BAM, bird avoidance model, and data from the National Weather Service. And to break that down, NEXRAD data gives you real-time information about where birds are. Just like we use NEXRAD on the flight deck to see where precipitation is, it also can see birds. The second layer of AHOS is the soaring model, or SOAR. That's good for 24 hours, and it's given twice a day. BAM is the bird avoidance model. It takes well over 30 years of data from bird migration patterns and information from the National Weather Service to predict where birds are going to be. AHOS will take all that information, and depending on when you're going on your flight, can tell you what your risk is of a bird strike. Low, moderate, or severe. Here we are at usahs.com avian hazard advisory system we'll just go through a few sections of the website um, this won't be an, a fully immersive tutorial on how to use it i was just suggested you get in here and play around but we'll hit the highlights so let's look on the left side here uh, we can select the type of area that we want to show we have our military training routes the vr ir and srs we can search by airfield icao code moas uh, all these different types of areas let's 
just choose an airfield. And I'm going to choose an Army airfield. Let's look at Hunter Army Airfield down in Savannah. We've got it set for March 6th. That's today. And let's just take a look at the AHAS risk. So this data that comes back almost immediately is based on next rad. So this is real-time information on the, the risk that uh, you might have a bird strike at uh, Hunter. What I think is also really cool here is you can also depict this information in a Google map. This is where it really gets pretty cool. So here we are in Savannah. Here's Hunter Army Airfield. We've got green here, and that shows no risk, but let's let's dive into some of the layers that you can see. So if we click at next rad, now we start to be able to see we have you know concentrations of biomass, which is basically birds all around it looks like you know north and northwest of, of Savannah. What is also really cool about this is you can add different layers to the map. So we said earlier in our video that birds love dams. So let's add dams, let's add landfills, and let's add golf courses. They love dams, landfills, and golf courses. So we can see here on the map, we've got uh, golf courses, landfills, and dams. That's going to show where, you know, they're just kind of highlights of where birds might be hanging out. Right, if we further expand our layers on our map, let's put all of the military training routes on here, IR, SR, and VR. Now we can start to really get a picture of where there might be, you know, a higher concentration of birds or, or risk for birds. So if we go down here to Orlando, we won't see all the next rad data because I didn't select Orlando here. But what we started with Savannah. But now we can look, we've got some higher risk areas, like a severe risk um, on this, um, this military training route. And that makes sense because if we look at the map here, what's right there, we'll take this off. We have the Three Lakes Wildlife Management Area. So, of course, we'd expect to have, have birds there. So let's put those back on and just take a look. I just think this is great because you can really get a picture or a sense of on your route of flight. You know, these are, of course, going to be, you know, lower uh, altitudes. But, you know, let's say you're you're flying to, well, it's, you know, near Valdosta. You know, if you're coming in on, for an approach in Valdosta, you probably better be aware that, you know, your bird risk is going to be higher over here um, just to the south, uh, southeast of, of Valdosta. I think it's the aha moment for, for me on how useful this tool can be. All right, let's do something different now. Let's pick, a, let's just go with the default Victor, this uh, Victor uh, Romeo 025 uh, visual route. And instead of picking it for right here and right now, let's pick tomorrow and let's look at our AHAS risk. Now we can see that because we picked tomorrow, we're not using next rag because that's real time. We're not using SOAR because that's more than 24 hours out. So our risk that's being determined is based on the bird awareness model or BAM. Uh, let's look at AHOS Plus, which is going to show us some very interesting information. So with AHOS Plus, this is going to show us what our risk is by time. But also what's interesting is where is the risk greatest, right? The, the height above ground, AGL, that we might encounter birds. So that's where you'd want to be alert um, anywhere up to 1,100 feet, you know, 1,500 feet. That's where... Uh, the likelihood of a bird strike would be uh, greater. It's also important to note that if there is a difference in the, the model's risk output, AHAS is going to default to the higher risk. If if the SOAR model says it's moderate and NECTRAD says low, um, it, it's going to indicate a, a higher risk. And that's a good overview of the system. I'd encourage you to get in there and try it for yourself. There are instructions on the site, and there's uh, in the download section, there's also some PowerPoint presentations and some links to some other videos on on how to use the site. If you'd like for me to do a, a deeper dive on AHAS, uh, just let me know in the comments. We dispel some myths about birds and bird behavior. One of the things that we say in aviation is if you see a bird, you should immediately climb because the bird is naturally going to dive. Well, I searched high and low for any proof that birds as a defensive mechanism will dive when they see an airplane. And I couldn't find any. I also reached out to very credible scientific sources. None of those sources had any information about a bird diving away from an airplane. And while a bird may dive when it's near an airplane, I don't think we can say that that is a proven fact. All right. Another myth going around is that birds, if they see a flashing light on an airplane, that they're going to immediately get away from it. The problem there is that birds see light and colors very differently than how we see them. Some birds don't even see well at night, 
and some birds like an owl see exceptionally well at night. Lots of GA airplanes are equipped with a flashing white landing light. And that's really the light we're talking about. There's really no evidence to suggest that a bird's going to get away from that light. I found two studies about birds and light avoidance. One study was from Purdue University, and it, it suggested that blue and red flashing lights may cause birds to disperse. Those lights weren't the type of lights that you'd find on a normal GA airplane. The only other experiment I could find about flashing lights and birds getting out of the way was an FAA experiment where they attached UV LED lights on an ag plane, flew it around for 80 hours, and the pilot reported that birds seemed to get out of the way. Again, that's not something that's equipped on our GA airplanes. So I think it's safe to call that one a myth. The better reason for having your lights on is for traffic avoidance. If after all that you're unlucky and you still end up hitting a bird, the number one thing you should do, of course, is fly the plane and get on the ground safely. When you do get on the ground and if you have the opportunity, you should report that bird strike to the National Wildlife Strike Database. That'll help protect other pilots in the future. And if you think a bird strike can never happen to you, well, that kind of sounds like a hazardous attitude. And I put together a video about five new hazardous attitudes in 2024 that you can see here. Safe flying, everyone.